the PS Vita never really had much official support, and after 2015, Sony kind of just erased it from its memory. But the Vita found a new home. There are tons of talented indie and homebrew developers who recognize the console's potential and are making lots of great games and software for it. But there's one thing I haven't seen done with the Vita, and that is VR. The reason why is probably because it's a really stupid, impractical idea, but if you've seen any of my old GitHub code, you'll know that I'm a pretty stupid, impractical person. So that's exactly what we're going to be doing. The PS Vita might not be the perfect candidate for VR, but it can definitely get the job done. It has both a gyroscope and an accelerometer for tracking head rotation, and its 544p resolution provides 480 by 544 pixels for each eye, which is bearable at the very least. It also supports the Unity game engine, which will make it easy to create a few small VR games that make use of its hardware. To make sure my idea wouldn't be a complete disaster, I decided to quickly put it to the test by taking the generic gyroscope shooter game I made for my Wii U prototypes video, Where is it? and turning it into a VR game. I created two cameras, one for each eye, offset them by an arbitrary amount, and made them children of an empty parent object. Then I created a really simple script that rotates this parent object using the Vita's gyroscope. And to finish it off, I slapped on this transparent lens overlay that I made in GIMP that's probably kind of useless. I tested the game with an old VR headset I made, Wait, I forgot how to, okay, like this. and I was pretty surprised by how well it worked. I'm surprised at how well this works. How do you shoot? Okay, like this, like this. Ah! Where is it? I'm so scared. Oh my god. Okay, I think it's like inside. Where's the next one? Alright. But this trashy game and even trashier VR headset weren't gonna cut it. Because the PS Vita is such an epic console, it deserves an even epicer VR headset to go along with it. So I modeled this custom 3D printable VR headset in Blender and printed it using- <laughs> Who am I kidding? You've come to the wrong place if you expected me to do something practical. Instead, I made this. From a Wii U fight pad box, this 99 cent Google Cardboard kit, and a lot of hot glue. I could show you a time lapse of me creating it, but that would be pretty boring even by this channel standards. So I'll just show you how it works. This is the old stupid VR headset. And this, this is the future. Made possible by the sponsor of today's video, Metal Mario. You might look at it and think, wow, this is genuinely the ugliest thing I have ever seen. And you know, you're probably right. But it's made almost completely out of recycled material, so if you hate on it, you're literally hating on Earth. And look at this amazing Velcro technology. It allows you to slide in and protect your precious Vita. How can you hate that? And it even provides easy access to the trigger buttons. Oh wait. There you go. And when you're done enjoying your amazing VR content, you can simply undo the Velcro latch and slide out your device. In all seriousness, while this thing is pretty ugly, I was pretty proud of it after testing it out. It actually works somewhat well, which came as a huge surprise to me. I can look without even using my hands. No hands, no hands.
It's so beautiful. I think I think I'm gonna cry. <laughs> I can see the pixels. Now that I had this really cool VR headset, I had to make a really cool game to go along with it. I spent a lot of time brainstorming possible game ideas, but then I realized I should do what I do best. Downgrading, I mean, I mean remaking existing games. I thought about what classic games would be fun in VR, and Pac-Man instantly came to my mind. I imagined how thrilling it would be to move around in a Pac-Man maze in VR, constantly turning your body to avoid ghosts. Plus, the game wouldn't require any button inputs, just head rotations, so you wouldn't have to hold your hands up to your face like a loser. So it was time to get to work. I made models in Blender for the maze and the ghost in its different states. Then I created a new project in Unity and... Okay, you can stop the montage. Yeah, I might have accidentally wasted three weeks of my life getting a little carried away with the code. I won't go into it too much in this video because I know not everyone's interested and my viewer retention rate kind of sucks, but I'll give a quick rundown. The entire game takes place on a grid and objects just lurk between points. I have a 2D array of tiles, each having a corresponding Vector 3 world position, and the status of each grid tile is determined dynamically based on the mesh of the maze using physics.checksphere and everything that's not a wall is set to be a pellet other than a few hard-coded exceptions that are set to be empty. And like I said, Pac-Man and the ghosts lurk between points on the grid, with Pac-Man's next move being determined by the head's left and right rotation, and the ghost movement being determined at each intersection tile through a mix of randomness and breadth first search pathfinding. Honestly, at this point, I think the game itself might be more interesting than the whole novelty of PS Vita VR, so I definitely want to make a more in-depth video in the future about its creation for those that are interested. But enough of that. I'm sure most of you guys just want to see the end result. What an amazing splash screen. Too bad I can't see it in VR. The first thing you'll see after launching the game is this title screen. It's really just there to give you a chance to get used to your surroundings before being thrown into the game, and it also lets you switch between VR and non-VR mode. Once you press start, the game takes a little while to actually begin. Once the game begins though, it runs pretty smoothly, and playing it in VR for the first time was a really cool experience. Kinda scary. He's right behind me. Alright. Oh my god, oh my god! <laughs> Just like I imagined, playing Pac-Man in VR adds a whole new horror or thriller element to the game. I'm really happy I was able to achieve this result since that was my main motivation for making the game. Oh dear, oh dear. Switch! No! I'm cornered! Ah! I got, I got eaten alive. My first death in Pac-Man VR. Okay, eat him. Come on, come on, come on. Turn around, dude. Let's go. During my first playthrough, I did encounter a few issues, like the minimap being too far down to actually see in VR. I can't really see the minimap that well, because it's at the very bottom of my vision. 
Yeah, I actually can't see it at all. And the power pellet timer getting frozen. Yes. Yes, Tub. Come on, turn around, turn around. Eight. Seven. Wait, the timer's frozen. What the heck? Why is the timer frozen? That's not supposed to happen. But those were easily fixed. Pac-Man is great, but let me give my final thoughts on the actual point of this video. Virtual reality on the PS Vita. It works pretty much as well as I expected. Sure, there are better options out there, obviously, but the low resolution didn't seem noticeably worse than VR on your average phone. I can definitely see myself going back to make and play more Vita VR games. And if my strange endeavors interested you, you should definitely try making some VR games for the Vita yourself. I'll leave a link in the description to a tutorial by VitaHex that explains how to set up Unity for the PS Vita from start to finish, and if you have any specific questions, feel free to message me on Twitter or Discord. And if you do end up making a cool VR game, I'd love to see it. The same goes for VR headsets too. I'm sure you can make something that looks better than... than this. And one last thing, since I know I'm going to get a lot of comments and DMs asking for a download for my PS Vita Pac-Man game, I'm planning on releasing the source code at some point in the future, and when that happens you'll be able to use Unity to create a build you can play on your Vita. And that's it. I really hope you liked this video since it's been in the works for a while and I had a lot of fun making it. I'm always trying to get better, so if you have any feedback, suggestions, criticism, don't be afraid to let me know in the comments. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Subscribe.